Hi, this is a quick video to show you how to create texture arrays for your Super Mega Splatter. A texture array is really just a collection of textures that act as one texture on the GPU. So we're able to sample from lots of textures rather than just a few. Uh, so the first thing we need is some textures, which I have in the examples folder, if you're following along. And then what you're going to do is right click, go to create, Mega Splat, texture array config. And the first thing you're going to want to do is name it. We're going to call this Mega Test Diffuse because we're going to put diffuse textures into this array. So if we look at the properties for this, it has a list of source textures here. It has an option for whether or not those textures should be linear, which is very important to get right. And then uh, an option to export the texture list, uh, which we can talk about later. That basically allows you to access information about the textures at runtime. Uh, and then it has some info for preview rendering and then finally the cluster library. So there's a little trick in Unity, which is if you lock the inspector here, then it'll stay on this object even when I select other objects. And this is really useful because it allows me to select multiple textures at once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my cliff 01 and 02, and I'm going to go ahead and grab the cliff sharp 01 and 02 diffuse maps. And then what I'm going to do is drag them into the source textures. And so this is nice because it lets me drop them all in at once. Assuming that works. There we go. So now we see we have the four textures in here. Now you'll notice that the order is sort of random. Um, and one thing that we have to do is align the arrays so that all of our diffuse textures are in the same order as, as the normal maps or any other uh, arrays. So what we're going to want to do is click the sort button here which will sort these alphabetically, and that will just get them in the right order for us so we don't have to think about this. Now these are color images. They have um, the RGB has the uh, albedo in it, and the alpha has a height map uh, information, which is how Megasplat resolves its blending. Uh, now because they're color information, we do not want them to be linear. All other maps, which are non-color information, you want to be linear. Uh, that's actually very important because if you have your textures not linear and they are storing information like normal maps, uh, you will get the wrong result. So there's another option here which is to export texture lists. If you turn this on, this is going to export a scriptable object that you can use uh, in runtime to query information about the textures. So that let, lets you do things like have a physics array cast against the terrain and then get back which texture you pick uh, with an actual name. So that's really nice. And then we have some preview rendering information, which we'll get back to later. These are used for the previews in Megasplat. So when we're done, we can hit update, and it'll generate the texture array uh, for us. And what it has also done is generate these two clusters. So what a texture cluster is, is a collection of textures. And then you can use that to actually paint multiple textures at once using a noise function um, or other functions to choose between the textures. So that is a really nice uh, thing because if you'll notice in this terrain here, you don't see any tiling. And that's because I've done everything with texture clusters. And so what's happening is, is that you're seeing similar textures, uh, three textures that are similar in most cases, or two in this case, uh, blended together across the terrain and that breaks up all your tiling so you never see, it, see anything tiled. Now, how did it know to make these two texture clusters? Well. It's done by naming convention. So if we have Cliff01 and Cliff02 here, then they will end up in the same cluster. And then Cliff Sharp01 and 02 will end up in another cluster. You can create clusters manually, uh, but I find for most use cases, it's just easier to name things this way and have them created automatically. Um, so then what we would do is create our other clusters for our other uh, mappings, which basically if we go to Create Megasplat, Texture array config, we can make a mega test uh, normal, and I'm going to do the SAO extension on this to let me know what packing mode uh, I'm using. So the texture cluster works basically the same here. We have to unlock an R inspector, uh, lock it again, uh, so that we can now go and select our cliff 01, 02, and cliff sharp. 01 and 02 normal SAO textures. And we drop them into our source texture array 
and then we sort them. And now we have them in the same order as the diffuse map, which is very important. And these need to be checked as linear because they are data, they are not colors. And then we can go ahead and update our array and it'll create the actual texture array object that Megasplots uses. Well, again, it'll create the clusters. We're not gonna use them in this case because we just generally use the diffuse for that information. But now what we can do is set up a preview. So if we go back, and let me just search here, and then go test. So if we get our diffuse array here, let me select that and we unlock our UI here. Uh, what we can actually do is point that normal config to the normal SAO, and this will put normal mapping in all of our brush previews, which makes them look nicer. And then we can set the packing mode on that to normal smooth AO, which is uh, our packing mode that we are using for these textures. So uh, the final thing that we can do here uh, below this is you can see this physics data size. So if you're using tessellation and you want to get your physics en engine to interact with the tessellated geometry, then you can set a physics data size on it, uh, which goes up to 128 pixels. And this will generate uh, a bunch of little textures for the CPU to use to calculate physics for the displacement mapping. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to bother. So um, we've set up our uh, texture array, and we've set up our normal SAO array, and we've set up the preview so that it can use the normals, the normal mapping, uh, to draw the previews with normal mapping, which looks better. So what is this normal SAO packing I was talking about? Well, there are a bunch of packing modes available in Megasplat, and the reason is is that there are ways to optimize. Uh, the normal SAO packing is really nice for terrain type surfaces because it gives you a full physically based rendering with uh, a normal map, a smoothness map, and an ambient occlusion map. And then of course you have your diffuse and your um, height map in the, in the diffuse channels. So this is nice because it means you can get a full PBR pipeline. Uh, you, you don't have metal or emissive, but most terrains don't use those. Uh, and you can do that in only two texture samples. Uh, if you pack these in the normal way, where you have a normal map which is separate from your smoothness map, which is se separate from your ambient occlusion map, then you have four samples per pixel. So that's a lot more expensive. So that's what these packing modes are about. So if you're confused about what they are, this is an example of one of these textures in Photoshop. And what you can see here is it looks kind of like a strangely colored normal map. And that's because the first two channels are from the normal map. They are the red and green channels from a traditional normal map. Now normally a normal map looks blue and that's because the blue channel is mostly white. Well it turns out that you can reconstruct the normal map from the red and green channels. You can reconstruct the blue panel, uh, blue uh, channel with a little bit of math in the shader. So that's what I do. I reconstruct the blue channel automatically and then the blue channel contains our smoothness value. Uh, so now we have per pixel smoothness and finally, the alpha channel contains the ambient occlusion. So there are multiple packing modes available for Megasplat. If you look at them, they each have separate uses and features. Choose the one for the features you need and get the most efficient packing possible. And once you create your textures, if I clear my search here, uh, what you have to do when you make a, a, a texture array is all textures in the texture array must be the exact same format. So if I select a bunch of my diffuse maps here, what you'll notice is that all of these have the exact same settings. Okay, they are all the same size, they have all the same compression settings, uh, etc. And then if we were to look at normal SAO here, loose maps, you'll notice that these are all set to advanced because we don't uh, want them to use a standard uh, sRGB compression. They're set to bypass the sRGB sampler. Uh, this actually has a different name in uh, Unity 5, 5.5. Uh, 5 .5. And then they're set to be in linear space through their mint map generation. Uh, because again, this is information, so we don't want it gamma corrected. And so you have to set these all up the same, otherwise uh, when you create a texture array, it will throw an error and let you know that one of your textures is different. Now there's one little gotcha here, which is if you use PNG format, PNG format will pre-multiply the alpha channel. And so what will happen is if you have an ambient occlusion let's say in your normal SAO packing, and it happens to be all white, then it will decide to get rid of that alpha channel. Uh, and then you will have a three channel texture instead of a four. 
and in other cases it will pre-multiply it in and pack it uh, in a different manner. So I like to use TGA textures for Megasplat because um, they don't have this issue. Uh, you can use uh, PNG, but uh, only on things which don't have alpha channel. Otherwise, you'll run into problems. So, I hope that covers uh, texture arrays, and uh, thank you very much.